Hey friends, I hope your weekend is off to a great start. Uh, let's talk about this weekend's gospel reading. This weekend's gospel reading comes from Matthew chapter 13, which involves a couple of stories about a sower and seed. And the one from our gospel reading uh, this weekend is the very first of those two stories where uh, Jesus tells the parable of the sower who goes out and throws the seed and it, it lands in lots of different places. We're all very familiar uh, with that passage. In this particular gospel, though, uh, Jesus puts it in a slightly different context. Uh, we're told that the disciples approached Jesus and said, why do you speak to the crowd in parables? Now, if you go through the gospels, about one third of Jesus' teachings are in the form of parables. And it wasn't unusual. That was a common technique uh, for teachers back then, to put things in parables uh, for one of two reasons. Uh, first of all, when talking to an uneducated crowd, a parable can be a wonderful way to get a point across. And many of the people in Jesus' time were very simple people. They didn't have educations. Uh, they, they couldn't read. And so to speak in uh, some analogies that would help them to understand things uh, was really, really important. Um, the word parable literally means to set something beside. Uh, so it's like an analogy, an example that can help explain a point. Uh, the other reason, though, that Jesus spoke in parables was to kind of come in the back door, so to speak. Um, sometimes it's not helpful for us to teach something too directly to someone. Because if we teach it too directly, the walls come up, right? The resistance comes up, the defensiveness comes up. Like even in marriage counseling, uh, we're told, don't say things like, uh, you hurt me when you X, Y, and Z. That's too direct, okay? Instead, we're told to say things indirectly, like, I was hurt when you said X, Y, and Z. Same point, but it's a little less direct, which tends to keep people's defense levels lower and makes them more receptive to hear the message. Parables do something very similar. They're sort of a backdoor approach to teaching someone something that they might become very defensive about. And that might be what's going on in today's uh, or this weekend's gospel reading because Jesus quotes from the prophet Isaiah, I think it's chapter 6, verses 9 and 10 that he's quoting when he says, You shall indeed hear, but not understand. You shall indeed look, but never see. Gross is the heart of this people. They will hardly hear with their ears. They have closed their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and be converted. And I heal them. The language here is almost a, a language of sarcasm, of, you know, heaven forbid that these people really get the point. Heaven forbid that they hear. Heaven forbid that they see and be converted and healed because they're so shut off. God's inviting them here through Christ to see in a new way, to see as he sees, to hear as he hears, so that there is a transformation. But Jesus has preached at times directly, and the walls just come up. So he's taking this parable approach, this backdoor approach, hoping, hoping, heaven forbid, hoping that they'll actually listen, that they'll keep the walls of resistance and defensiveness down, and finally start seeing things in a new way. I think this is a very apropos and, and relevant teaching for us right now because with all the stuff that's going around uh, going on in the world right now uh, politically uh, religiously the things that are going on in regards to social justice racism uh, even the COVID stuff what I'm finding is that the walls of defensiveness and resistance are going up 
quickly. And people are only wanting to hear and only wanting to see what's comfortable for them. And we're all being challenged at times to, first of all, kind of go in the back door when it comes to sharing anything out of fear that if we just share honestly with people, those walls are gonna kind of gonna come up and it's gonna become a monologue rather than a conversation. Uh, but then we're also being challenged to not let our defenses go up, to be willing to enter into conversation with people who have a different view, who have a different perspective, and to be open, receptive, to listen deeply. Even if the, the person's not speaking in parables, if they're speaking directly to us, if they're not whitewashing the message, but to to just leave the defensiveness and the resistance low and to receive, to even be open to saying, hmm, God, help me to see new perspectives. Uh, I've, I've, I've encountered this probably the most in regards to the rioting and the protest regarding Black Lives Matter. It seems like a lot of my directees are very resistant to looking at that from a different perspective other than the one they're comfortable with. That's a sign of resistance. It's a challenge for us then to say, God, help me to see this from new and deeply uncomfortable perspectives because that's where you're at. That's where God is at. That's where Jesus is at in every parable. He's offering deeply contrary and uncomfortable views to the people of his time. So I, I hope God doesn't have to quote Isaiah to us of heaven forbid that Tom sees things and hears things in a different way, but hopefully God is saying, thank you, Tom. Thank you to all of you for a willingness and an openness to not be defensive or resistant but to be open to seeing and hearing and knowing and understanding things in a new way. I hope you have an awesome weekend.